Hello. Um, I know there's a bit of a delay, so I'm not really sure if you can hear me yet. Uh, hey, okay, you can see me certainly as well. So hello everybody. And welcome to Amsterdam. It's a beautiful Monday evening and it is 20. 5 degrees centigrade, which is 77 Fahrenheit, and uh, very, very pleasant. So, hello, Jackie, Susan, Tish, Trisha, Catherine, Leah, and, and many more. So, yeah, welcome. Let me just, um, there we go. That's how we do it. Ta da! Hi. <laughs> so, welcome, welcome, welcome. And I'm also aware that with these recordings, I don't think the chat. Um, is saved now that I'm streaming through another platform but hey that's just how it goes so that's enough of looking at me look at beautiful uh, and here's the Princess Canal and the reason I'm starting here uh, is because we're going around slowly street by street bit by bit and I took a little jump uh, because last week we were there and I actually showed you this picture here of this view of how those buildings block off the Prinzenkracht, the Prince's Canal. So instead of walking us all the way underneath the railway lines and up here, because we've done that before. Hi Peter, by the way. Um, I thought I'd just start here. And look how lovely it is on the water. It's just such a lovely balmy evening. It's great. So welcome everybody. Thank you for joining. And um, remind me to put uh, Stylish Slicey in a plant thingy. I'm not going to put them here because I put them here too many times. So I want to put it towards the end of the tour. Um, okay, Liz is saying you believe the chat's saved but on YouTube not present. Well, that'd be great. But I thought I'd check that. But anyway, let's get cracking. So, are we leaving the Prinzenkracht behind? And we're joining uh, one of my favorite canals again, the Brauerskracht. Uh, the Brewer's Canal, that's the word I can never say. Uh, actually, <laughs> you see me struggling. Uh, you know, quite good. But it's like <laughs> the Brewer's. <laughs> The Brewer's Canal. I prefer in Dutch the Brouwersgracht. The Brewer's Canal. And um, it's called the Brewer's Canal is because when it was dug in 1585, way down yonder, at the start of it there, there were actually four breweries. They were the Cloverleaf, the Heart, the Double Eagle, and the Lily. And um, so, yeah, that's why it's called the Brewer's Canal. And there are breweries here. Who cheated? What, am I missing something in the chat? Okay, <laughs> I don't know. Hello, Polly. Um, the Brewer's Canal. Yeah, they also, I'm just kind of waiting for, hey. Uh, okay, can I, excuse oh, yeah, me. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> fine, trying to not get yeah. you in shot. Okay, there's somebody doing uh, photo things. It is a good place for it, let's, let's face it. Oh, it's a gorgeous canal, Tricia. And we've actually seen this before on Detailed Amsterdam, just before I headed off to the Western Islands. But just as a little anchor, let's see it again. Uh, this over here is a picture of stockfish. And this was a warehouse that was actually called Bremenhaven. And... Uh, <laughs> the guy who owned it was a trader in stockfish and anchovies and cod liver oil. I cannot even begin to think of how dreadful it must have smelled here. And let me just make the most of this fabulous zoom. Check it out. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Hello, Mark and Lynn and uh, everyone, if I didn't see your names. And let's just pull back a bit here because I love these warehouses here. They're so stylish. And I'm um, a bit close to them, really. Um, let me get over here where I can pan down better. Much more stylish than today's warehouses, don't you think? So check it out. <laughs> Yay, anchovies. No, <laughs> no to anchovies. 
Uh, these were built next door to the anchovy warehouse uh, because they were also part of that same fish factory. So uh, the architect was Françoise Caron and uh, or Francois Caron. And um, he is the person who did a lot in that period. Hello, Catherine. And um, he was responsible for these buildings that we've seen before. Uh, they're just one street away. And so these were these beautiful Art Nouveau buildings that he also um, designed. But uh, obviously these were just warehouses, so they didn't get that full on kind of uh, beautiful treatment. But uh, so I'm just still loving the fact that I can share these photos and get rid of it as well. Okay, so let's wander yonder. Um, what do we have here? This is a rebuild, obviously. It actually looks like it's zoomed in a bit too much. Anyway, these apps are all different. Love the little gable action going on here. Look at the beautiful gables and the blue sky. Oh, thank you for checking the chat. I thought I checked last, last week's stream and the chat wasn't there. So good to know it's there. That's great. That's wonderful. There's one less problem I have to deal with. <laughs> um, okay. So look at this building here. Ooh, is that someone's house? Okay, it is someone's house. So I'm not going to point the camera inside, but my God, it's lovely. <laughs> they got big double doors open onto the canal and it's just so chic. <laughs> Um, but let's talk about this, this baby here. Hello, Michelle. Check out this house and let's see if the zoom can do its real work. These cute little angels faces up there. Okay. Now, 132 uh, Brauersgracht. This middle entrance here uh, for many, many, many decades, maybe even centuries, uh, was used as the entrance to a hidden Catholic church. Now, this was the St. John and Willibrord, or St. Uh, Johannes, I guess, and Willibrordus. <laughs> it sounds so much better in Dutch, doesn't it? This was founded in 1664. And let me show you a picture of it while I'm talking. This is what it looked like inside. Oh, come on. I still haven't quite got... Oh, yeah. Got this thing quite right about... There we go. Okay, here it is inside. Now, as you all know, because you've all paid so much attention during my history tours, uh, that there was a time when it was illegal for Catholics to have churches that looked like churches, so they had to have hidden away churches. Not hidden from the authorities, <coughs> okay? just so that they didn't actually look like churches uh, from the outside. Everyone knew exactly where they were, okay? It's like really incorrect to say that they were hidden and they were scared to be found. It wasn't that at all. Um, but there was a Schuilkerk. Oh, look, I can see inside. <laughs> There's a really steep staircase inside, okay. So that's enough for Erizim. Hey, Anche, hello. Uh, so that was a Skyle Kerk, uh, which means a hidden away church and uh, Catholic. Eh? And then in, so that was from the 1660s. And uh, from 1724, the Dutch Catholics actually refused to accept Vatican appointed bishops. And they decided, no way, Jose, we are going to appoint our own. And the Pope wasn't too happy about that. Um, and you know, Popes don't handle disappointment well. <laughs> so he excommunicated the bishop and uh, that they had appointed, and this caused a schism in the church. And they formed what was called the Roman Catholic Church of the Old Episcopal Order. And in Dutch, they were just called Old Catholics for short. And they uh, used this church here until 1953. So let me show you some other pictures of it. Uh, we've done that one. This is actually where it was. So you can see here behind the building, 
Uh, the building that's just set behind the other ones in the sort of middle to the right, middle right with the little cupola, that is actually the sort of hidden away church. Okay, so that's you would have walked through there. And uh, just to give you an idea what it's used for now, because it is now part of this company called Umsiatka, uh, which is a company where you can rent out studios uh, for um, film and for photographs. Sorry, I will get the hang of this eventually. <laughs> you know what happens, I'll tell you what I'm struggling with, is that when I share a photo, it comes up under the chat and then I have to find a way of finding that I can do that to pull it away from the chat. Anyway, it'll take a while, no doubt. But that's what it looks like today. And uh, you can see the shape of the church and everything. So I think that's uh, a pretty cool and nice airy, sort of airy space. And then proper studios, you know, where you can um, uh, that's how we do it. Where well, you can do your own little videos and photo shoots and everything like that. Okay. So, this is so weird. <laughs> uh, you know, this period. This is, a, this is a schizophrenic building. So here at the top, we have good old Louis XIV. Uh, that Baroque period. And uh, for those of you... Oh, look, it looks like they should be googly eyes. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> anyway, the way I describe Louis XIV in Dutch Gable style, it's all these stupid little bobbly things and you can't tell what the hell they really are. That's Louis XIV. Uh, but then when we come down here, it's really weird. It's kind of eclectic, I guess. It's these very odd sort of pilasters with kind of funny little pediments on top. It doesn't make any sense. But yeah, I mean, I guess in the eclectic period, why not? You could just do whatever the hell you wanted. And uh, that's why they call it eclectic. <clears throat> so, stunning, uh, stunning south facing um, buildings here. Okie dokie. Another warehouse. Like, we just keep on seeing these warehouses. <laughs> but what a lovely warehouse with this trapezium gable and think of these fantastic south looking apartments looking over all of old Amsterdam. It's just the best, isn't it? And um, here we have some detail on the side and the warehouse, not surprisingly, is called the Emperor's Crown. Well, it would be, wouldn't it? And then the numbers underneath, MDXV111, or III rather, 1618, before you break your Roman calculator. And uh, it was a warehouse, but this was actually also where there was a small Jesuit church allowed uh, for about 10 years from the 1650s and 60s. And then that relocated around the corner into the Kaiserschrift number 22. And this crown here, of course, is the crown of uh, Maximi not Maximilian, um, Charles V. So uh, that character that just keeps on coming back into my tours, not because I particularly approve of him, just because I think he's one of the most interesting characters in history of that period. Now, check this out. So in the Jordan district, I showed you there were lots of these little hangen, Hangen, meaning little alleyways that led into slums. And you can't quite see, it's so well closed here. But up there is the name on the wall. And it says Man, Manden uh, Makersteeg, which means um, uh, Basket Maker's Alley. And this leads back, I'm so fascinated by what is behind things in Amsterdam. So look what I did. I went on to, oh look, I'm getting better already. Google Maps and did satellite. I actually colored the canal in blue just, to, oh. oh my God, I just got run over, just about got run over. <sighs> you know, these e-bike delivery people come so fast in the other direction. Oh man, anyway. Okay, so up the alleyway here is the red line on the map. 
And that is leading into this garden section, and the red blob is a house, believe it or not. I mean, nobody can get there except the person who, who rents or owns that house. And I just love all these secret places and hidden away places. I'm fascinated by them. I should have open tiny go and ferret around the city and look at all these things that people used to see for ages and we can't now. Okay. This is looking down towards the Kaiserskracht. And um, what I did last week is I showed you a photograph from down there looking this way. And that is where they... Um, took that chunk out of the building so that they didn't ruin the views from this canal as they kind of did from the, uh, the Prinzenkraut. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, what next? I'll probably get to that side of the street on different tours. <laughs> you just take one side of the street. Hi. Um, and, um, oops. This house here was the first house that was ever, ever purchased um, by the Stadsherstel, which is that organization um, for, uh, for looking after the, uh, you know, uh, restoring buildings of the city. And it was a fruit and veg shop originally. Beautiful, look at this lovely gable up there. And one of the kind of really unusual quirky things about it is this staircase here. Uh, which kind of tucks up around and it makes almost like a pulpit. Yeah. Above, um, above the old toilet. <laughs> okay. So this here was the old toilet and we're talking back in probably the 1700s now. Um, yeah, how else would you explain such a weird entrance? But this is what Detailed Amsterdam is all about. Trying to find these... Yeah, the steep... Oh, Susan and Ruth. Hello, Ruth, by the way. The steps are so steep here. It's how it is. Okay, now. It's such a beautiful evening for walking around. It really is. Um, now. Okay, I'm going to head up towards the... Oh, just, let's just really enjoy some flowers and stuff. So much effort put... And some roses. And let's just check out the other side of the canal as we go down. So here's a house, but I photographed this house, but so often from uh, the other side of the canal. It's one of my favorites to take photos. I mean, it's laundry day, look. <laughs> the laundry hanging out. Okay. So we're coming up to the Herrenmarkt. Uh, so this is a little market square, which is just at the end of the Herrengracht, the gentleman's canal, yeah? And I got some photos to try and line up here. So let's check it out here. So let's look where we are. We're on a, a road here, and then here is a building with a step gable. It, it was originally with a step gable, and then it was... Um, uh, you know, renovated and made different, and then eventually it was taken back to its original. So I've got an old photo. Just let's put a look at a few things. There's the, the Lutheran church there, the old Lutheran church, and there's some, some canal houses here. So I've got an old photo from this, this spot. And let's see if we can line it up and make sense of it. Okay, here we go. So you can see on the left, there's the step gable. It's white, but that's, you know, that's just because that's something future that happened. They probably plastered over it and pointed, pointed, painted it white. And now there's an open space, which you can't see. Hang on a second. Well, anyway, there's an open space on the left, but on the left in the photograph are a bunch of houses. And that's because there were houses there, uh, or buildings there, rather. But what we can run right away, because it's share for a moment, and then you can have a look there. 
So these houses, and there's one behind the tree there, you can still see. And then, of course, on the left here, it's... Uh, and I'll share the photo again, maybe. Let's see how that works. So this was uh, before they had... There are some trees, actually, but not as many trees. Uh, okay, so that gives you an idea. Okay, let's close that down. So the Heeren Markt. Um, it was actually built as a pig market, believe it or not. And um, in uh, 1617, there was a building the other side of it. And just, it's a children's playground. I just want to check there are no kids playing. They were earlier when I walked this way. And thankfully, they've all gone home. All of them? Yes, definitely. Great. So I can show you. Oh my God. Look at this kid's playground. <laughs> Just like a clutter of left bicycles. <laughs> okay. It looks like there's been some uh, apocalyptic occurrence and all the children have been beamed up. <laughs> Either that or they just don't know how the hell to clean up after themselves. But anyway, okay. How funny. Um, okay, that building on the other side is, um, was built in 1617, that building there. And we've seen that from the street side. And it was the meat market and there was a city militia upstairs. And then from 1623, it was led to the West India Company. Okay, the WIC. So that's like the sister company of the the Dutch East India Company. The West India Company, more blatantly, you know, specifically a slave trading company, one of its three main functions. And this square here became a corn market and a beer key. And the buildings uh, that we saw um, were actually a soup kitchen. So um, there was a soup kitchen here for a very long time, uh, like over a century. Uh, where poorer people would be given soup. And then those, those are actually the buildings which were on, on this side of it over here. So let's just have a look from this side. And i so loving this uh, screen share story. I have another photograph. Uh, this one. Okay, so we're really pretty well set up. So have a good look at... Um, oh, come on. Yeah. at the quayside, and then I'll make this photograph bigger um, on the basis that Amsterdam was a working city. And what we're looking at here is from 1891. That's the photograph. And this is the loading and unloading of beer kegs, because this area here where we just were was the beer market, one of the beer markets, one of the beer keys. There was another one as well. And um, also in the photograph, you will see in the front is a little steamboat. And this was the departure point for the barges that went to Harlem. And the steamboats, once they had steam power, would be able to pull quite big, heavy barges and get goods from here to Harlem, which is 10 miles to the um, west. And that operated until 1970, eh? like quite some time. And just scooping around quickly, and I'll tell you about this restaurant in just a minute, but I found this really cool picture from here. Uh, there's a bridge over there, which is called the Melkmeisjesbrug, which is the Milkmaid's Bridge. Actually, look at it. So it's right across the canal. The canal walls don't come in at all, but check out how it used to be. Uh, that's actually how it used to be. Um, sometime in the late 1800s. So a small pedestrian bridge, but a drawbridge. And that would have been, so that steamboat that I just showed you could actually go out that way and through the locks at the end on the left and then go to, um, uh, go to Harlem that way. Okay, so this is, um, I want to say, one of my favorite restaurants in the city. That's probably overstating it because I haven't eaten there that frequently because it's pretty damn expensive. It's a lovely French restaurant. It's beautiful inside and they also have, I mean, it's great. You know, just to be able to dine on the quayside like this is really quite something. Uh, as I have asked, get run over by it. Yeah, there we go. 
ah, this is, you know, whenever it's such lovely weather like this, you always think this could be like the last time it's like this for six months. So really enjoy it. Okay. I've often, well not often, I've, I've more frequently eaten lunch here where you can get a plate of nice food for not too much money, but the a la carte menu in the evening is terribly expensive. Oh, look at this. This is one of my favorite boats, this Holivar. This is the boat that Obama and his party went on when they were here. And it's also a boat that I've actually chartered privately for private tours um, every now and then. It's just great. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So elegant. Okay. Looking down the Herrenkracht, the Gentleman's Canal here. The first of the three, and we're gonna spend quite a lot of time in these canals in the, in the next few weeks. But for those of you who are in my Facebook group, my and Lee's Facebook group, this is the house here. So this is the house that I posted uh, the link to where you could see all the pictures of. So it's actually just 14 and a half thousand euros a month to rent it. That's including you know, um, utilities. But you've got three floors, let's face it. It's quite something. And it's pretty rare uh, to be looking down a canal like this. There are only, I think, 12 or 14 places in Amsterdam where the houses look down a canal. So you're paying for that as well. And of course, it's absolutely gorgeous on the side. And uh, just a little side alleyway here that links up to the Harlem Street. But I just happened down here on my way here and I found this rather nice gable stone. The fisherman. There you go, nice looking catch for the day. And you know this restaurant, the Bell Hamel, this is the side door of it. It's beautiful, like Art Nouveau detail inside. So it's a really gorgeous in summer and winter, actually. It's a very, very nice place to be. Okay, now, over here at number 54. So this house here was where I, this, so this one here, let me just like pan up quick. Was where quite a well-known draftsman and artist lived. His name was Herman Misset. Herman Misset, yeah? And he spent most of his childhood in bed um, because he was, he was uh, not unwell, but he had a disability, something was wrong with his hip. And he spent most of his childhood in bed looking out of that window. And uh, when he became older, he still had a real problem with his hip, but uh, he was quite intrepid and he went all over the place. And he became, I'll just jump onto this working barge here. Um, um, he, he painted hundreds of cityscapes and he was actually commissioned uh, by uh, the Amsterdam City Archive to go out and document the city. And so many of the photos, so many of the photos I'm showing you are from the Amsterdam City Archive and they're free to use as long as you cite where you got it from. Uh, so they've got his whole, you know, life's work. So he was living there and then this is a painting he did from this view here. So if you look on the left, just before I put it on screen, you'll see there's a bridge with um, a tunnel and then a span and another little tunnel. In his watercolor, uh, there were still five arches on that bridge. And then there's the little milkmaid's bridge on the right. So here comes the picture. And... Uh, Gorgeous. And there, right in the middle of the picture, is this ridiculously expensive house, okay, that you can rent for a vast sum of money. Um, but uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And such a wonderful resource, you know, the city archive. Okay, so let's just bring us back to there. 
have a good look and then I'll bring the photo back again because it's kind of nice to compare. You can see the big high building just to show you how little's changed. Look at the big tall building and I'll try and get a view of it behind the tree. You know, summer is lovely, but when I do these things in the winter time, there are no leaves on the trees and then we can see so much, so much more of the buildings. Eh? Okay. Um, by the way, just in case I don't get the opportunity to show you again, um, you never know where I'm going to end up. I haven't planned out the following weeks, but you know that so much of Amsterdam, so many of Amsterdam's canal walls are about to collapse. Well, these ones here have been rebuilt and they're almost done because this was obviously really bad. So they started with the worst ones and the way they rebuild them now is what I'm standing on here is uh, uh, a reinforced wall of the canal and actually the bricks are more just cladding than anything else but it's super super strong and the reason the canal walls have been uh, falling apart is because of the heavy vehicular traffic but at least now the way they're fixing them that's not going to be a problem and um, I see I saw there was a question about when did he paint those and uh, I don't actually know, <laughs> okay, I can't remember. Um, but I think we're talking late 1800s, I'm not, maybe early 19s, but I'm not sure, I can't remember. I mean, you know, I researched, there's this one I actually researched a few days ago and it's just slipped my mind, so sorry about that. Uh, up here, look at this wonderful gable here. God, the zoom is so good, I didn't, what I, for those of you who don't know, the Zoom I've been using on YouTube before was so bad. But this looks great. So I probably don't even need the photo, but here's the photo anyway, uh, just in case it's not as good as I expect it to be. But what a strange fish. And you know, given that they're a country of fishermen, you thought they would be able to depict fish slightly more accurately, wouldn't you? And um, not surprisingly, uh, this place was bought by a herring fisherman in 1631. So there you go. Yeah, happy dolphins they look like. And what a lovely, beautiful Louis XV uh, gable just to the left of it with that kind of Rococo look to it. Right, let's go yonder. Yonder, yonder, yonder. Um, Okay, so we're going over the Little Milkmaid's Bridge. Very pretty and ever so nice at night when they light it up as well. And, um, oh, I love this part of town. I mean, I don't really want to live in the city, but if I had to live in the city, I'd like to live on the Brower's Croft, um, but with a garden behind. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, move us across quick without giving you whiplash. That's one way of doing it. A happy looking bride. <laughs> right, okay. So, um, Oh, so I, I forgot last week and it makes such a difference. But if you're enjoying it, please, can you hit the like button? Ta-da! I remember to ask. It's important, apparently. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, look at the evening sun. Okay, so is this one I want? Ooh, does that almost get run over? 46. Um, no, there was something I wanted to show you up here. Okay, maybe this is it. Oh yeah, here it is. Useful things, numbers. Okay, here is a house and uh, it has a gable stone. Check it out. Oh, I love this zoom. <laughs> okay, 1790, no, 1759. And um, it says, Neut which means never a volmarkt in a way means completed, but here it means never perfect, I think, more than completed. 
you would never guess it, but this was the house of a chairmaker. <laughs> okay. And uh, this gable stone here is full on Louis XV as well, so Rococo style. And um, unusually decorated. So on the top is what's called a rocaille quest, crest, quest, 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 crest. <laughs> and the sides have what are called like these S-shaped volutes. And they're actually acanthus leaves. Now, um, this building used to be two floors shorter. I can't zoom out quite so much. Um, and then what happened in the 1960s is it was renovated and they added two more floors. But they kept the, you know, the, 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 the bottom stayed the same and the top stayed the same, okay? They just added two more floors and kept the same old gable up at the top. It's incredible how they do that. Um, God, it's a real traffic jam here. Check this out. <laughs> so this is a very busy little canal because there's quite a difficult corner there. <laughs> this is like where I try and avoid coming in my little boat because my boat doesn't idle so well. So check this out. And then we got one of these big old buses over here and another one behind it. So yeah, this is obviously the place to be. Okay, now, what else, what else, what else? There is something else. There's a tiny house somewhere I want to show you. And I wrote a poem. <laughs> yeah, the chair on the right did look a little nice. So nice to see an actual business here, a plumber is, a load heater is bedrive. Um, okay, have a look at this little house here. It's so small. Um, it's five meters by seven meters, and that's 16 feet by 25 feet. That was the original size. And uh, it was renovated and they added on a, a little bit more, but for most of its life, it was tiny. And it has another one of these little alleyways next to it, and it's called Kicker's Hong, which means Frog's Alley. And I want to go down there on open alley day. But in front of the house, it has some writing on the side. And what that says is, in Dutch, Door den tijd wordt de spruit in boom. And what that means is, with time, the sprig becomes a tree. How poetic. And actually, that was the motto of the Amsterdam Achilles Drama Society, which existed briefly from 1845 to 1860. So to tell you about it, I thought I should write a poem. So here goes. Okay. It was formed by a poet in 1845 to turn the tide of theatrical drama's demise. His obscure performances lacked only audiences. It closed down, not to my surprise. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, I think I should definitely start to try and get a movement going for an open alley day. Does sound brilliant. So that is the <laughs> southern facing side of the Brewers Canal. And now we end up again here on Singel, where we've been a few times, quite a number of times. So it's almost like an anchor point for us. And uh, where are we for time? Good, we're in good time. So let's just say hello to these locks again, where we certainly... Oh, I used to work on this boat. Um, no, I didn't work on that boat, it's a different one. I worked on a very similar one to those. Those who love their bikes, Gary. And this is how the boats actually get around the corners here. Thank goodness they have these like really effective bow thrusters. What's happening here? <laughs> Check it out. 
I mean, they can actually turn on their own axis. It's quite something. You know what I notice with Prism is the zoom is great and everything, but I can't get that really lovely wide angle <coughs> that I used to get. But hey, I think on balance, this is an improvement, eh? Okay, so you have a doors open day in Bristol. How interesting. Um, oh, so talking about bikes, so here's another one. Let's, uh, let me get a bit further away and we can try and watch him do his whole maneuvering thing. So talking about bikes, um, like many Amsterdamers, I have too many bikes. And um, in my building, they've, you know, because I live in what's called a living group, a own group. You know, we share space and stuff. And I've got too many bikes taking up too much storage space. And there are two bikes I really love, but I don't use them. And I keep kind of not giving them away. Uh, you know, because maybe my nephews will come and they'll you know, need to use them, but that never happens. And uh, so what I thought, and I was going to give them to refugees, but then I, I couldn't find any <laughs> refugees. And then I thought I can just leave them out for the rubbish. So that, I thought it would be terrible because they're such nice bikes. So what I did is yesterday I got this idea of contacting the flower bike man and asking him if he wanted them. And he said yes because they're really lovely sort of old American beach cruiser style bikes. So I delivered one on the way here and then I'll deliver one tomorrow. And um, I'm sure you will know the story of his, but um, he started with the bikes many years ago um, so that his wife, Michelle, uh, could find her bicycle because she suffers from epilepsy and um, she was struggling to find her bike and then she was struggling to find the way home so he put flower bikes along the route so she could follow them home and then that's captured everyone's imagination here and uh, now they're all over the city so as painful as it was parting with my bike i look forward to seeing it hopefully at some point beautifully decorated around the city so that brings us to the end of what I've prepared. Let me just find a nice view for you. And we, oh, a slicey. You haven't reminded me. I need to put a slicey somewhere. Um, somewhere nice. Oi, oi, oi. And there's no flower boxes here. So the slicey needs to go somewhere nice. Uh, <laughs> okay. I think maybe up on the bridge over here. So, for those of you who don't know, the Slicey is my mascot. And uh, the idea is that I put them out in places because they're so ridiculous looking and they hopefully make people smile. And people can also just pick them up and take them with them. That's the idea of the publicly placed ones. And then every week what I do is I have a little quiz question and the answer is, <laughs> something that already happened in the tour and then the first person who gives me the right answer then wins a slicey so trying not to get run over let me just try and find a home for this one i love this whole little wild thing going on here but i think maybe please keep off newly sown flower beds okay maybe 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 somewhere here Okay, I think, let's see, yeah. oh, that's good, perfect, oh, there's so many little bugs, oh, oh your, your images, okay, okay, so there is the slicey, long, May he make people smile. Okay, now the question, let me just put my spectacles on again. <laughs> Jungle slicey, I love it, Tish. Okay, so if you've already won a slicey and you want to just hold back and not answer the question, 
and let somebody who hasn't won one win one, <laughs> won one win one, okay. <laughs> Uh, then the question is very easy for today's slicey. And I want the answer to be in English, please. Uh, today I walked down, we walked down a canal. What was the name of that canal in English? That's the question. The name of the canal that we just walked down for the whole tour. What was the name of the canal? <laughs> oh, Tony, I'm glad you saw the slicey <laughs> be set free. Brewers, indeed, Lynn. So there you go. Lynn, if you would like to send me an address, uh, preferably today, I've got the day off tomorrow and I'll post out slices tomorrow. So the first one that came through on my chat was uh, Lynn Steinberg and uh, you can find me in you know, my, my email address of course in the description and you can also no doubt just in Facebook I'm sure we all connected anyway so thanks for joining me everybody and um, thank you for any donations um, they come in all week which is very kind I do appreciate it let me just settle myself here uh, the buy me a coffee stuff and that sort of thing is really appreciated and um, great Ronnie so uh, yeah I, I really, it really kind of tickles me how there are these slices all over the world now uh, I think it's pretty cool and uh, I'm very bad at posting them but what happened is the last couple of days I bought more googly eyes and I've actually stuck googly eyes on about 60 slices so I'm back well back in stock okay and um, yeah, so I'm gonna send out the like from the last four weeks I have to do and I'll do it tomorrow. I promise, promise, promise. Put me under pressure. Okay, thank you, uh, Trisha. And um, no problem missing it. That's why I leave them on YouTube. Okay, and you know what? I'm gonna have to redo all the 1 to 18, you know, with this much better streaming, streaming package. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get around to that at some point. Because I figure people would look at number one and two and stuff and go like, oh, I'm not gonna watch this kind of, kind of quality of stream. So I'm gonna lose out on people finding me. So I'd probably go back and do those. But anyway, we do have a lot of touring. If, if you haven't joined Lee in my group, it's uh, Mark and Lee's Splendid Amsterdam Adventures, and that's where I put a map of where we've been so far, which is not very far. Crazy, I know. Okay, uh, bye bye everybody. I'm gonna go and have a beer. <laughs> okay, so ciao. Thank you for joining.